Hey everyone, before we get started, I wanted to introduce you to Josie, the newest member of the Wellman family, and uh, I figured, hey, what not a better way, or a more effective and cheap way to get your attention than by showing you the, probably the cutest puppy known to man. <laughs> so, this is Josie. Josie, say hello to everyone. Here's your bone. Enjoy. Thank you, Josie. Merry Christmas. Hope everyone had a very happy holiday season and is getting geared up for 2014. I know Jesse and I are we're diligently working to improve the blog, and one of the ways that we would like to do that is to come to, come to you through video. Um, as opposed to just writing posts, uh, we'd like to maybe try leveraging some of technology, get a little crazy, and uh, publish some videos. So we hope that you guys think this is a neat idea, and hopefully we can continue to do them in the future. So as we gear up for 2014, people are going to start making New Year's resolutions. It's natural, right? And a lot of people are going to be focusing on health as one of their primary resolutions. And whether it's to lose weight or to look better or to feel better, people are going to resolve to become healthier. And while we certainly think that this is a noble and very admirable thing to do, the sad state of the union, per se, is that a lot of them fail, a staggering number of them fail, and the overwhelming majority of those that fail, fail within the first month of the year. I think as Tim Ferriss put it so bluntly, you know, we break commitments to ourselves with embarrassing regularity, and outside of New Year's resolutions, just commitments in general. And so I, I think the question then becomes, well, why is this? Why do we break commitments to ourselves? And I think there are various reasons um, one of which we've written about on this blog before, which is willpower. Willpower is a wonderful thing that humans have, and it, it essentially is our brain's capacity or ability to make decisions that are better for our long term as opposed to satisfying some immediate gratification. And what people don't understand, though, is that willpower takes energy. It takes quite a bit of energy. As a matter of fact, there's some research out there that would suggest that too much energy into constantly having to pull on this willpower lever in order to make the right decision um, can actually have adverse effects on health. So it's kind of counterintuitive and, and somewhat of an oxymoron in that on one side you need the willpower to make right decisions for your long-term health, but at the same time requiring too much willpower can cause stress which can have negative downstream effects on the health. Um, I want to quickly tell you a story, and that is, or, or an example rather, and that is that Jesse and I, a few months ago, took Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University course, and it is essentially, for those of you that don't know, it's essentially Finance 101 through a Christian lens. It's a nine-week program. Each week you have one class. That class is 90 minutes. The first 60 minutes is lecture about a particular topic, followed by 30 minutes of a group breakout session where you're able to speak to people, bounce ideas off of them, ask questions, answer some questions, um, really good dialogue with, with a group. And regardless of what you think about Dave Ramsey and the program itself, I truly believe that he understood a key principle and that is that no matter how much knowledge you have, no matter how much knowledge you have about a given topic, whether you're an expert at 401ks or investing or Roth IRAs or personal finance or budgeting, the fact is at the core of everything, if you're going to make a change and it's going to be long lasting and it's going to be real, you've got to get at behavior. And that's something that Dave Ramsey understood and is something that he really capitalizes on in his program and is probably one of the reasons why it's so successful. And this same concept can be applied to New Year's resolutions and to commitments to becoming healthier. Um, because when it all comes down to it, it, it comes down to a behavior change. And now that the New Year is approaching, there are going to be a lot of people that join gym memberships and hire personal trainers. And there are going to be people who purchase certain supplements, who enlist in eight-day body cleanses. You know, and while, again, I think all of these are noble pursuits because the goal and your, your head is in the, and heart are in the right place. You're, you're trying to become healthier. The fact is they don't stick. The behavior won't stick. And unless it sticks, it's not going to be a meaningful change. 
And that's something that Jesse and I have really wrestled with since we did our first Whole30 back in October of 2012. But since then, the behavior has stuck. Now, we'll be the first to admit that even throughout this holiday season, we indulge in our whole 80-20 principle of you know remaining healthy 80% of the time and, and enjoying life's indulgences for the other 20%. Even though that somewhat skews, we'll admit it, of course it does, but still that fundamental change has occurred. And one of the ways that it occurred was through the Whole30, and which is what we're going to be doing starting in January. And we hope that you join us, and we, we hope that it can become a long-lasting behavioral change and not just some short-term fix where the rebound effect could arguably be even worse. And a few of the ways that we think that the Whole30 could really help you make a behavioral change is, for one, you're not overcommitting. You're simply eating real food. And, it's, and it eliminates all guesswork. It takes the stress from the willpower out because the guidelines have been established. You essentially have a set of guidelines that you follow, and that's it. And you do it for 30 days. Another one is that results are there, and we're a firm believer at when you're seeing the results, you become a believer in exactly it is that you're doing, and those results in turn become a motivating factor. And then finally, we have already got several people who have committed to doing it in January, and we're a firm believer that with the community and that sense of accountability is just critical and, and to really making a long-lasting impact. So we truly hope that you will consider joining us as we do another Whole30 starting in January. More details are to come. We're considering having a at least a weekly conference call to where we can have people who are all doing the Whole30 hop on the phone, ask questions, give ideas, talk about what they're struggling with because again we feel like that sense of community can really help you and can help make that long-lasting impactful change. So with that we'll sign off Hope everyone has a blessed rest of the holiday season and a very happy new year.